Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, on this episode of the Bullet Points this morning, we are going to do, in my opinion, one of the more important videos that we've done in recent memory. Now, the reason that I feel so strongly about that is because I'm covering something that happened in Oakland, California. Now, that's really important. This happened yesterday. There's a news report there, which is linked in the description along with everything we're about to cover, where it actually shows, unfortunately, an active murder in the commission of a crime caught on a security camera, of which this news report is about. Now, I'm not going to show it to you here, but I'm going to build on it. This is also something important to understand an article that we put out in the second press all about something called the Oakland Ceasefire. There is a second press article down there. I made it free for you guys to research all about this. So it's all concise and built together by Mario Acevedo. It's also written in po or audio and podcast for your review as well. Everything that we need to know about reducing gun violence is in this article. And the gun controllers commissioned it. The gun controllers have data. It's on their website. And yet they ignore it in lieu of gun control proposals. You explain that to me. That's exactly right. All right. This is one of those that you send out. If you think we earned that subscription, please hit that bell. But let's get it. I want to show you this. This is crucial. All right. So here's a still of the actual video that we're talking about. I'm not going to show you the whole video because obvious reasons. But when you're looking at this still, this is the active commission of a crime. That muzzle blast right there, that's not from a 22 pistol. And remember, this is in Oakland, California. That's from a AK. Now, judging, it's a very grainy film. It looks like a Draco AK pistol. It looks like a very short-barreled AK with no buttstock. That's what it looks like. That would be an AWB. In California, AWBs don't exist. And California is ranked number one for gun control in the entire United States. They have AWBs. They have magazine limit bans. They have red flag laws. All of which failed in this case, didn't they? In fact, the other three people that are involved in this terrible and egregious act all come around with handguns and fire more than 10 rounds, and they don't do any reloads. Also illegal. You partner that in with red flag laws, and I'm not exactly sure where your argument is for effectiveness when you're seeing something like this. Now, let's dive into something that the city employees said around Oakland, and this is where the second press article ties in. It's linked down there. I made it free. It's that important. Jump onto it. It's free. All right, check this out. Oakland has a very holistic approach to reducing gun violence called ceasefire. And we have gotten national headlines. Uh, we cut gun violence in half in Oakland, and we've kept it there for many years until the pandemic. Okay, so just a question to you guys as rational and logical human beings. If a city had a 50% reduction in gun violence, don't you think you'd have heard about it, especially if it was commissioned by a gun control group like Giffords.org? Do you think that'd be pertinent information? I think it'd be pretty crucial, unless it would undermine your push for gun control, which is what's happening. So here's the actual article, which I said, I the second press, you can check it out yourself. It's Giffords Law Center, The Ultimate Failure of Oakland Ceasefire, also available in podcast form for your enjoyment. All right, let's dive in. The Giffords Law Center is no stranger to those of us involved in the struggle to preserve our Second Amendment rights. At every turn, they propose legal barriers to infringe upon those rights in the name of combating gun violence. So it's both ironic and tragic when Giffords sweeps under the rug its most effective program at reducing that same gun violence. Why would Giffords do that? Because otherwise, the Giffords Law Center would have to admit that gun control has no effect at reducing gun violence. And that's incredibly important. The author, Mario Acevedo, he did an incredible job on this. I'm going to keep going. This is incredible. It's free. Please look at this because it ties everything together. What Oakland ceasefire managed was a 46% reduction of homicides, the majority of which were gun homicides, from 2012 to 2018, dropping from 126 to 68. Meanwhile, in Chicago over the same period, homicides increased 11%, in Baltimore 42%, and in Denver 67%. So it's showing that Oakland is an outlier through using that program, the ceasefire. Okay, check it. The authors of this study pointed out that in 9 out of 10 other cities which implemented a similar model as an Oakland ceasefire, achieved a reduction in homicides from 34 to 63%. The link, the study itself that he's referencing is in the article. It's incredible. If you could reduce that amount, why would you not do it? Why would you push for all of this lobbying, all of these arrangements, all of these protests for gun control when you have the answer right there on your own website? Answer me that question because it's about control. Now, I'm going to tie this last one together. No matter what your stance is on the Second Amendment, 
Every one of us wants to live in a safe communities. With that in mind, the biggest tragedy of Oakland's ceasefire is that all the proposals the Giffords Law Center continues to push in the name of stopping the epidemic of gun violence. The only one which proved to work is kept on a back burner at the far end of the stove. If Giffords was really concerned with public safety, why aren't more programs like Oakland's ceasefire presented as priorities to state and municipal governments? Could it be that Giffords Law Center can't admit that its efforts to prevent gun violence are really about gun control and not about saving lives? And that's the question I'm going to leave you with. If it was truly about saving lives, if they could save one life, and it was about reducing gun violence and the epidemic of gun crime, don't you think they'd go with an existing data study that has proven results in 9 out of 10 cities? That's what I leave you with. Let me know what you guys think in the comments field below. Check out that article in the Second Press. I made it free for it's that important. And I will see you tonight at the 9 p.m. segment. I'm Braden. See you later.